game changers. The topic of our capstone project is churn prediction for online games. And we are asking the question, will you stay with us or do we have to make you? Uh, my name is Henrik Lange. I've studied sensors and cognitive psychology before, uh, and then I jumped into the gaming industry. And now I basically want to make the transition from gaming to playing with data. Hi, my name is Alvin Klick. I'm originally a physicist, and I just love working with data. Okay, let's start right with our prologue. First of all, what does churn mean? Churn is basically a business terminology to express that someone is leaving a business. In our case, that would be an online game. Um, gaming is a big, a big market with a lot of financial potential. So on the left, you can see a graph that basically uh, shows the development in the last years. Uh, in 2020, we had an estimated value of roughly 200 billion US dollar on the gaming market. In 2021, it was already 214 million. And for this year, we have a projected number of about $235 billion. So you can see that's a pretty big number, and this trend is expected to continue. Um, one big part of gaming industry are the so-called MMO games, massive multiplayer online games. Those are games where you, people play, where a lot of people play simultaneously, and usually they are built around that interaction. For example, for leaderboards or high scores, or also more direct stuff like trading or fighting. Um, therefore, those online games rely largely on an active user base and especially free-to-play games. Free-to-play is a model where everyone with a device that can run the game can join and play for free. This kind of games usually um, finance themselves via microtransactions where users can pay for advantages or cosmetics. That could be a powerful unit or special clothing for your in-game representation. Okay, um, our motivation here. Why would we want to predict if someone is leaving a game? And can't we just like, recruit new people? Of course we could, but um, reports from industry and uh, research show that the majority of people already leave the game within the first seven days. And from the people that stay, only a small fraction is actually paying for the games, which is kind of a problem for free to play only between two and 10% pay there. Further, we have seen in studies that um, it's five times as costly to recruit a new player versus retaining an old one. This means it's very valuable if you are able to predict that someone is going to leave your business so you can deploy a countermeasure. That could be something like offering them a special bonus, special in-game things or other stuff. So basically you save money by keeping those old players instead of uh, throwing the money into recruiting new players, which is more expensive. And of course, it's especially valuable if you can keep someone who's already playing. Okay. Um, for being able to work on the, this problem, we had of course get, had, had to had get our hands on some kind of loot or as we data scientists say, a data set. This data set has been pro, um, provided to us by a Hamburg-based company, which produces this kind of games, massive multiplayer online games, and it has a mutable theme. So let's uh, take a short view on the data set itself. It basically covers activity data from users of two months of registrations. So that means that we have the data from users that registered in those two months. The total size is about 3 million rows, and it has 12 diff different columns or features, as we say in data science. Um, it spans a time frame from January 2021 to basically now, November 2022. Um, the users in the data set are from all over the world and from 180 countries. And during our exploratory data analysis, we found that it has similar, similar dropout rates as it had, has been reported before. So between 70 and 80% on the first day and 80 to 90% in the first week. And here I will hand over to Alvin. Thank you, Henrik. Now we come to the part where we try to predict the future. And um, for that, we must first define our goal, right? We want to build a model um, that predicts if a user that was online yesterday will come back or has left permanently. And for the sake of um, our problem, we will um, say a user is considered churned <clears throat> if they were inactive for 30 days straight. So now we have defined our goal or our target. Yes. Um, 
So as I just said, a user is considered churned if they did not log in for 30 days. So we simply calculate the time difference between logins. And if this time is larger than 30 days, we will give our target a one. Um, what you see here are the login dates for one example user. This user was not active a lot, which means we can fit their whole um, history on one slide. Um, we see that this user actually has two churn events as denoted by the little ghost icons there. We also see here that there are more days after which the user does not churn than days after which they did churn, meaning um, our data set is quite unbalanced. Yes, we have uh, way more zeros than we have ones. Um, so before we came to the modeling, we were uh, we did some battle preparations, you could say. So we uh, reduced the scope of the problem by making some additional assumptions. First, we will only try to predict on users that were active yesterday. That means we won't make predictions on yesterday's inactive users. And the reason for this is we want to get them while they are still active. We will also exclude users that were active for less than one week after registration, right? We saw earlier that about three quarters of users already churn in the, on, on day one and 80 to 90% in the first week. And people that stay longer than one week show that they are generally interested in playing the game. So getting those to stay longer is a more realistic endeavor. Um, I should mention here that our preparations actually make the problem harder and not easier. Yes, predicting that a user will churn that was already inactive for three days or, um, or one that only ever locked in for 10 seconds total, that's quite easy. They, they are going to churn probably, right? But this information is of course um, of limited use to our stakeholder and that's why we, we are doing these, these restrictions. Um, okay, after all these preparations, we started modeling. The features we use in the model include the user's um, activity on the day we make the prediction, as well as other information like the country they live in, the current day of the week, and so on. We also included the user's um, recent activity in aggregated form, for instance, the average activity over the last week. Finally, we load all into our predictive model. We have used a classification algorithm that is based on decision trees. Um, this type of algorithm is quite fast in predicting, which is great in our context, as we would like to apply it for daily um, predictions, of course. It is also simple enough so that it can be computed efficiently with the type of hardware that we have at our disposal. Uh, the specific model architecture we use is called XGBoost which is a very powerful type of random forest that is a model that is using a lot of decision trees, of course. Um, so to um, evaluate our models after the prediction, we uh, choose three metrics. Um, those are recall, precision, and F1 score. And the recall um, basically tells us how good we are at identifying um, people that are actually going to churn, right? Um, the precision on the other hand tells us how many of the people that we predict will churn will actually churn. And uh, then lastly, the um, F1 score combines those tools to be more specific. It's a so-called harmonic mean between recall and precision. So let's have a look at our um, high score, right? And uh, we have a precision of 32% um, with our final model, a recall of 77% and a combined F1 of 44%. That means that roughly speaking, about half of our churn predictions are going to be correct. So the question is, is that good or is that bad, right? Actually for our problem and our stakeholder recall is a preferred metric, uh, which means that our result is kind of okay-ish or even good. Yes, we can identify more than three quarters of the people who are about to churn. Also, we believe that for the given problem and the data at hand and the, and the time scope of, of our project, uh, this is probably as, about as good as it gets, right? And whether this is good enough for our stakeholder to be used in practice is another question and of course a business decision on their part. And for the final conclusion, I give back to Henrik. Thank you, Irene. So uh, let's have an outlook and on the future perspectives. Basically, uh, what future steps for the project could be is um, applying other learning algorithms like the BG and BD. 
it's a very long and complicated name, I won't say it, or others like uh, neural networks. Um, unfortunately, uh, in our project, we didn't have the time and it was basically out of our scope to uh, also attempt those, but um, our stakeholder could probably apply them later. Another thing uh, would be a more generalization of the models we built. So for example, include uh, the users uh, from the first week, which we excluded if they were not uh, active for one week, or also try to include on yesterday's inactive users, which we with the current model also don't do. So basically here we conclude and thank you for your attention and for having us.